guys, welcome back to Gretchen's Bakery. Yes, we are building on recipes and you know what that means. This is where all the fun starts. So building on recipes simply means I have prepared a lot of recipes ahead of time so we can go ahead very quickly, slap them all together and make ourselves a really nice red velvet layer cake. So as always, I have prepared ahead of time. I have my Swiss buttercream right here and I'm going to add my cream cheese icing recipe to that because if you guys know anything about my classic combination for my red velvet cake, it is a combination of the Swiss buttercream and the cream cheese icing together that makes up the filling and the icing for this cake. So of course I did bake my red velvet cake ahead of time. It is cooled. It actually was in the freezer for a little while too because I do like to build my cakes when they're frozen. By the time we're done building and decorating the cake, it's ready to eat and it's completely thawed out. And of course, I never throw anything away. So these are some red velvet scraps from trimmings from cakes that I've done previously. So whenever I trim down a cake or I have some extra cupcakes, well, whoever has extra cupcakes, right? But I'll grind them up in a food processor, throw them in the freezer, and this is gonna be some garnish for my cake as well. So the first thing that I am going to do is go ahead and combine my cream cheese icing with my buttercream. That's really all it needed, just a quick spin to get them both incorporated together. Keep in mind that anything that we do add to the Swiss buttercream, whether it's chocolate to make chocolate buttercream or mocha to make mocha buttercream or cream cheese to make cream cheese buttercream, it is going to make that base recipe of Swiss buttercream softer. Um, but we're going to have to keep this cake in the refrigerator anyway due to the cream cheese icing. So my recipe for red velvet cake bakes up into two pretty thick eight inch layers. I'm gonna go ahead and slice each of those layers in half and I'm gonna have a four layer red velvet cake. If it's a little lopsided, I'll go ahead and give it a bit of a trim. And that's where I get those garnish pieces. That's better. Don't throw it out, stick it in the freezer. Hmm. Now that naked cakes are all the rage, we could just leave it like this. But nah. All right, there's my quick crumb coat into the freezer, about 10 minutes, and then we'll get to decorating. Okay, now we can go ahead and put our final icing. Whoever said less was more. Now, I have a cool trick for getting smooth sides on your cakes. Sometimes when we're icing cakes, you'll get some air bubbles or it's just some rough edges. So if you have a blowtorch, then excellent. But if you don't, it's no problem. You could just get like a bucket of hot, hot water, dip your spatula in, it gets the same effect. Now you see those spots here? I don't want my cake looking like a negligee, so I wanna add a little bit more icing wherever the cake is showing through. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I always do build my layer cakes on a cardboard circle. It's just so much easier to transport your cakes from the turn stand to the serving platter, and especially if you're going to use some garnish like I'm going to.
So I'm not sure how many of you guys noticed when I was putting the garnish on, I was having a little bit of trouble. This cake recipe is really moist, so these crumbs didn't really dry out very much in the freezer. So they were kind of falling off and I was having a bit of trouble. So what I did was I took the remainder of those crumbs and I put them on a sheet pan, stuck them in the oven at 375 just to kind of dry them out because my intention to garnish the top with these, I really do need them to be more crumbly, more fine ground and more dry. But before we even get that far, I want to go ahead and start the design that's going to go around the edge of my cake with my 4 inch scalloped cookie cutter here. Now with the number two tip that's found in your Gretchen's Bakery Essentials Cake Decorating Kit, you can click right here and check that out if you guys are interested to buy it. We're going to do a Corneli lace pattern along the edge of this cake. This is where the coupler really comes in handy when you're switching all these different decorating tips in one pastry bag. If you have hot hands like I do, we're hot mamas. A garden glove is going to prohibit your buttercream from melting inside your bag. What do you think? Leave a comment below and let me know how you would decorate this cake, or better yet, make it and share it with me on my Facebook page at Gretchen's Bakery. So thanks for watching guys. Be sure to get all the recipes at Gretchen'sBakery.com and I'll see you soon. Tricked you. You didn't think I was going to cut it, did you? I have to cut it. You guys got me addicted to eating this cake at the end of each video. You guys think I just eat one bite? I eat more than just one bite. Mm. Especially when it tastes like this. Wow. I'm a pretty good baker, guys. And stick with me. You will be too. Get to Gretchen'sBakery.com for all the recipes, and I'll see you soon.